Good morning and welcome back to Morning Express. We want to get into a lifestyle segment, as I mentioned before, went on break. Michael, this morning, is delving into the process of divorce. That's coming up in about a minute or two. Uh, but first, just some of your feedback uh, on Twitter and the conversation we had earlier on the newsroom, your thoughts on the sentiments the guests had this morning. Imali, you say, should truth be murdered in the fight against terror is a question you're posing uh, in as far as, you know, our journalists and a threat in the events you've seen unfold in Egypt and in specific Peter Graster, who's now been released, but two of his colleagues are still in custody. Um, and we've seen uh, this being a worrying trend in as far as what can you report and how far does that go. So you say it's a relief. But remember, he spent 400 days for an alleged crime. Where is the justice you pose there? Um, another comment here, Jackson Otieno, you have a harsh uh, comment for the media. You say the media has resorted to retweet as a form of information collection. News look like the Kardashians. Wow. Thank you for your thoughts, though. Um, we have Sama Seme uh, also just uh, appreciating earlier on there having um, Mr... Geoffrey Musoku as part of our panel on the press review. You say it's great to have writers uh, in the press review. I also just uh, want to look at some of your traffic, how it's looking out on the road this morning. And an effort to decongest the city, every street was turned into a matatu stage or parking uh, is what somebody is complaining uh, that complaints directed to the Nairobi Governor Evans Kedaro. Uh, watch out for a naked man with two stones on Mombasa Road. He looks insane. Oh my, this came in a minute ago. Uh, so, yep, there's that person on Mombasa Road who is um, nude. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, pretty much Wayakiwe traffic inbound uh, starts at Wakruku, Pangani, Matatu, Mayhem, na Mkoko, Wamekwama, Katikati. So, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, there's Mkoko Tennis. That's what Mkoko, I imagine, is alluding to. Good news for motorists using Bunyala Road. It's moving quite well for now. So that's good news. We rarely have that when it comes to traffic. We're glad you're watching. Uh, Michael, over to you uh, on the process of divorce. Thank you very much, Sophia. And uh, yes, uh, we are now on the lifestyle section where today we are talking about the process of divorce. And of course, uh, last week, if you remember, or those of us who were able to join us on the show, we talked about divorce in general and some of the ways and things that you go through just before the divorce. And one of the, uh, some of the questions that were really coming through was uh, what's the process, the legal side of it? And uh, we'll be tackling that as we go along and as I bring in the guests this morning. And uh, just to remind our phone line, uh, reminder our phone lines will be open and uh, the number will be showing on your screen you're free to call and maybe if you have a comment a question would be more than glad to see whether we can tackle it and hear from you um, and joining me in the studio today is uh, Wangeshi who is a lawyer welcome thank you good to have you, you. Uh, we also have Chris Hart who is a relationship expert and uh, who is a familiar face we've had you here quite some time <laughs> and uh, thank you for coming in yet again <coughs> Pleasure. And I'll start with you, Chris. And uh, this is in regards to uh, relationships. Uh, first of all, the surveys that we've looked at, uh, divorce is, uh, is, is on the increase, big mm. time. Mm. Uh, first of all, as a society, have we become a loveless society? Or are we getting into marriages um, uh, carelessly to a point where then we have to divorce later? Well, I think um, marriage is much more difficult than it's ever been in the whole of human history. And that's largely about the way society is changing. Um, and nobody's fault. Uh, for example, people live further away from their families and, and background. They, they're, you, know, you often get people living in cities where they have no friends or new friends, new, new networks. The process of finding a spouse who matches you is much more difficult than it used to be. It used to be you lived in a village, you married somebody from within five kilometers, you knew their families all your lives. Now think about Nairobi, you know, everybody you meet's a stranger. So the process of meeting the right person is much more difficult. Life itself is much more difficult. It's much more stressful, much more varied. So I think there's a lot more pressure on couples. And ultimately, that's the reason why people are divorcing. Okay. People still want to be in relationships and want to do their best in relationships, but it's much tougher. 
it's much tougher now um at what point does one actually realize and uh, accept that it's time for divorce because in marriage uh, or in any relationship really difficulties and challenges are expected they mm. are going to be there sure uh, but they get to a point because divorce again is another it's a, it's a very painful process um at what point does one realize and accept that uh, th this relationship is not going to work and divorce is the way to go well it sounds a little strange but often one of the couple doesn't realize that it's very common for one person to be planning a divorce long before the other so it comes as a shock um, there are however some very clear signs that experts recognize in re failing relationships um, instead of disputing things people start to move into criticism they start to criticize one another <coughs> rather than argue about what's, what's wrong. And the criticism gradually becomes contempt. People are being very rude to one another and it's beginning to get abusive. And then what tends to happen is that rather than problem solving, people start getting defensive. And when you see couples being defensive, you know you're getting very close to the point where a relationship will end. And then usually what happens is one of them withdraws from the relationship. You find yourself trying to argue with your wife, for example, and she just won't take part in the argument. She starts spending more time away from the house. She starts having a different social life to you. When you're together, you don't talk about anything except the children and pass the salt. You don't actually talk about anything anymore. When that's starting to develop, you're very close indeed. And usually what's happening at that point is that somebody's planning. Somebody's actually beginning to think about leaving. And you begin to see some telltale signs. Small family heirlooms start disappearing because, you know, they've been taken and put somewhere else. And so you start noticing little things happening like that. Mm. It, it's worth saying that the process of ending a relationship is always a process. People don't wake up one day and decide, I need to see a lawyer. They've actually been working through it for They've months. Been going probably. through emotions. Yeah, and mm. gradually they're beginning to envisage their life after the end of the relationship and as they begin to make that more concrete at some point they go and see an expert and, and the whole the whole process starts. okay now when you're at that process where or that stage where you know um, one one is like you've mentioned passive they don't want to argue they don't want mm. to they've literally almost disengaged from the relationship do you think it's still redeemable should the other party uh, you know, those see those telltale signs. Uh, is it possible for yes. them to um, shake it up and, you know, sort of wake Yes, up? it is. It's always possible right up until the last minute. In fact, it's not uncommon for people to be right in the middle of a bitter custody battle mm -hmm. and suddenly start to go through the process of putting it all together again. It does happen. I mean, you've got to remember that sometime in the past, the couple did actually quite like one another. Mm -hmm. And part of the, the, the whole process of putting it back together is to remember that and start envisaging what what life was like then and what went wrong and rather than blaming one another to actually say now what am I doing that's causing this and the other person needs to be asking the same question and of course that's the point at which it's often important to have a, a third party present somebody who can dispassionately say you know I, I can see what you're doing I think you ought to really stop doing that mm -hmm. and if, if that process does start usually people can get through it but not always you know it's worth saying that there are some absolutely irretrievable situations if you are married to somebody who's got one of the more serious personality disorders it's not gonna it's not gonna work you're okay. going to be totally miserable and sooner or later you are going to decide to leave okay and uh, Wangeshi I'll bring you in uh, uh, very shortly I'm not forgetting you yeah. <laughs> I just want to uh, make sure that we at least understand relationship wise uh, how far one has to go for them to actually now engage you in 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 the process and uh, Chris you've mentioned that uh, um, <coughs> if if there's mediation sometimes it can happen uh, but not always uh, if somebody before they get into the mediation and before they actually try and uh, resolve is are there telltale signs that can tell you even if I want to try this is not gonna work um, yes I mean I mentioned things like personality disorders if you if for example your your spouse is very controlling for example very abusive and you start 
trawling on the internet trying to find out why, you might well run into a situation like that. You might discover that you're seeing the symptoms of a particular personality disorder. If that's the case, then the chances of putting the relationship back on track are very slim indeed. Or if you do stay, it's going to be a very one-sided situation and very unpleasant. Some people do accept that for various reasons. But the, the key thing is this. Um, once you begin to start thinking this relationship is over, you've actually got to start thinking in terms of what's the effect of this going to be, for example, on the children, assuming you've got children. If you decide to separate, but do it well, the effect on the children will be minimal. And everybody, after a lot of heartache, will eventually be much happier than they were if you do it right. If you decide to do it as a very combative, thoroughly disputatious situation, everybody's going to be miserable. And you get situations... Including yourself, whoever is doing Sorry? combat. Including the person Oh yes, I mean, you get situations where a wealthy couple actually spend the entire fortune on lawyer's bills and everybody's thoroughly miserable and the children are, you know, devastated by everything and you don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. So if you begin to think about divorce, step one in my opinion should always be mediation. Start involving somebody who will try and keep the relationship together and willingly say to you, I don't think this is going to work and will start moving you towards being cooperative parents. People who are going to actually continue their relationship for the rest of their lives, but separately, mm -hmm. and go through the legal process in a civilized, business-like manner. And it, it, getting to that point is the most critical one, to say, I'm going to do it like this. That it's not going to be nice, but we're going to do it in a way which benefits the children, principally, much better. And I do want people to think about that fact, that if you have children, you never part. You know, you're going to be standing side by side at weddings in 20 years' time right. and christenings and, you know, you can't ever escape from one another once you've had children. Okay. Now, uh, Wangeshi, I'll bring you in and uh, once uh, maybe somebody has reached that point where it's not going to work and we need to get into a divorce, where do you begin? Um, I'd like to pick the button on from what Chris has said and, 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 you know, and, and further state that when you come and you feel like you've reached the end and you consult a lawyer, uh, the, a good lawyer will also tell you, have you tried mediation? Have you tried to reconcile <coughs> excuse me, the differences that have occurred? And, <coughs> and if this has already been satisfied and there is no chance of reconciling, mm -hmm. of the parties reconciling, then we would begin to take you through that process, and and you know, and you'd, you'd list down your, your 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 problems, the difficulties that you faced. We have several grounds of uh, divorce that the law recognizes under the Marriage Act: uh, cruelty, adultery, desertion. Uh, we have a new ground of irre uh, irretrievably breaking down of the marriage, um, and, and and you can present this to the court by way of petition and explain that the during the subsistence of the marriage you've encountered these difficulties and and then and from there the process begins you you get a response from your spouse and and they they do that by way of putting in an answer to that petition that you filed in court and in that they would also decide to either cross petition or just respond to the allegations made against them and from there, you, you leave it to the court to decide then mm. who is responsible for the breakdown. Okay, maybe this, this new addition, the breaking down of a marriage, yes. uh, yeah, well, that sounds very vague uh, and I could feel it in with anything. Um, how does the court then, how, 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 what does that define? Section 6 of the Marriage Act actually stipulates, it gives a kind of a guidance, a guideline that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes neglect. You can claim there that you're, you've, you've been subjected to neglect during the subsistence of your marriage. You can say that there has been depravity. You've been deprived of love and affection. You've been deprived of uh, sustenance. You've been deprived of the basic uh, elements that define a marriage. And if you itemize that, particularize it before the court, um, then it will be left <coughs> to the judge to, to make his determination. Okay. Now, once um, you've um, now seen a lawyer yes. and uh, you want to file for a divorce, do you yes. do this together or do you do this? Is it one of the spouses that does that? No, the requirement under the law is that you cannot collude 
to, 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 to partake into a divorce. It needs to be a unilateral decision that you have decided, I have decided, that I am not going to go ahead with this marriage, and I therefore petition for divorce. So there's no collusion mm -hmm. um, uh, on, on the basis of getting a divorce. Okay. Yeah. And if there's no collusion and one applies for the divorce, um, is it called applying? Or is it, it you petition. You petition. You petition, you to petition the court. For, a, for, for a divorce. So I'll assume that is the petitioner. Yes. Can the other uh, decline? Uh, you can, as a respondent, decide not to reply. Uh, you may decide that you are not interested in partaking in the proceedings. Mm -hmm. And for that, we refer to that as an undefended cause. Um, in, in that event, the petitioner would go to court and present their evidence, and more likely than not, the divorce would be granted because if service has been effected, uh, as per the guidelines given, uh, then you are required to put in your response and failure to which means that you're not interested in pursuing it. For the, in the event that you don't wish to, to, to go on forward with the divorce, you put in your answer and you reply that actually you are not willing to divorce, that you feel that the marriage can still be are reconciled mm -hmm. and then again that's put to the court and uh, determination is made okay yeah. uh, let's just go uh, through it uh, you know step by step fine I've taken my uh, um, um, petition and I'm filing for divorce yes what happens so that? you you file it in court and uh, you then are given a requirement <coughs> a time period uh, after service in which the respondent which is the other spouse is required to put in their response so you put it in and uh, you're given 15 days to put in your response after service has been effected. Uh, at that time, uh, you then present to court an application, which we normally call the registrar certificate, and you uh, declare that all the pleadings necessary have been filed. Either the respondent has put in their response or they failed to put in their response, um, and we're ready to proceed to hearing. Uh, at that point, it would be set up, a date for hearing would be set up, where both parties are called and required to give evidence in court. All right. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll come back to you in regards to property, because I know that becomes a very thorny issue. Yes. Um, but maybe I want to chime in Chris here. And uh, according to some survey, one of the biggest causes of, uh, um, of, of divorce is to do with finances, yeah. is to do with uh, property. Yes. Um, at what point do people get to where they're fighting over property, yet they came together possibly even without much, but built it together? Why would property be such uh, a, a, a big cause of divorce? Okay. Um, I don't think it's actually a cause. Mm -hmm. I think the real causes are often neglect, dishonesty, secrecy. You know, it's not uncommon to have a couple where unbeknown to the other, each is busy building flats in Buruburu or something, you know, and they're actually leading separate lives. Mm -hmm. um, what, why finance tends to come up so often is that it's often the touchstone of the issues in a relationship. Finance matters. And so, if the couple isn't able to talk about things, you can be sure that they won't be talking about money. Um, so, lots of things will be happening in the money area the property area that are going very wrong. But, you know, it's worth saying that although, the, with, with all due respect to the legal profession, the law is very unhelpful towards parting companies. The idea that they must have a blame is very unhelpful. The, the idea that somebody must be at fault is most unfortunate. It's common in every jurisdiction, but it's both basically wrong. And the idea that I must accuse my spouse of doing something in order to get a divorce it sets the scene for a great deal more difficulty than there ought to be. It ought to be sufficient that they don't wish to, ma to be married. The, the idea that it's irretrievably broken down is a very good one, but it ought to be couched in we have irredeemably broken down, not me or them. So, I, you know, I hope as the years go by, it becomes more cooperative. Okay, it makes it almost confrontational. At the moment, it's it. entirely confrontational. And okay. it's the reason why people feel obliged to defend themselves. Right. You know, I, I put in a petition that says my husband's adulterous or something. Of course, he's going to reply and say, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and, and that's not the good place to start. All right. Okay, um, we're going to take a call from Rocky and uh, Rocky <coughs> in Nanyuki. Good morning, Rocky. Uh, morning, too. Yes, Hi, your question or comment? Uh, mine is uh, more, more, more of a question, eh? mm -hmm. and I need some uh, professional uh, advice, maybe from uh, Chris. Okay. 
Okay, uh, mine is a little bit different. Yes, go, go ahead. Uh, it was not a marriage as such, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it was more of uh, a relationship kind of I had with it, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, a relationship we have uh, with this girl. Okay, okay. It got to a point that I got a uh, bit of some of the things she was doing, huh? Mm -hmm. And I resorted to like insulting her. And now she is behaving badly. She doesn't want me back. She claims that she's broken up with me. The mind is a little bit different. Not the legal part, but the emotional part. How do you handle the emotional part of uh, the whole uh, agreement, the whole uh, unity? I'm, uh, I'm kind of on right now. All right. Thank you, yeah. Rocky. Yeah. Okay, one more thing. Yeah? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if I might sound so desperate or, or something. Yeah? Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it got to a point whereby since I saw myself and we had already taken it to that other level, I even saw myself even uh, an extent of maybe like having a particular experience. I'm no longer going to be interested in uh, relationships that are not anymore. It is not with her, yes, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you, Rocky. Um, Chris, mm. he's uh, looking for help in terms of a relationship. It, uh, he, he says that uh, um, at some point the relationship went down and now his girlfriend doesn't want to have any, any of it. Yet he seems or sounds like he's interested in carrying on with the relationship. How does he repair that? Right. Well, I mean, Initially, of course, he must do his utmost to talk to her and try and find out what the real causes of the, the breakdown are and try and fix them, if that's possible. But it's worth saying that if she's already left and is saying very vigorously that she doesn't want to come back, then the chances of success are quite low. And so he should also begin the process of moving on. If there are children, he should start being a good father even though he's not living in the house mm -hmm. and he should start cooperating as much as he can with the girlfriend and just that process alone may go some way towards repairing the relationship but he probably needs to come to terms with the fact that the relationship's over and in effect what he's feeling at the moment isn't so much love as grief if you see what I mean he's, mm -hmm. he's grieving for the loss of the relationship and that's a process that will go on for another year or two and it's not easy but he will gradually come through it and he needs to think in those terms. All right. Wangeshi, um, now you've, be, you've, you've explained very well how we, we actually get to the process of divorce and uh, it is now uh, in court. Um, sometimes that process can be very long. Yes. What lengthens it and, and, and what <coughs> delays? Because at the point where uh, somebody has put in a petition, really the faster we can do this, the faster they can get out of it, the faster they can heal emotionally. Yes, which is the interest of most people. You know, you, you don't want to be going through that process uh, of, over a very long period of time. It's uh, emotionally exhausting. Um, the challenges to that, I would say, are dependent on the issues that maybe the parties have. For instance, uh, when you speak of property, you speak of children. The items that you have between the two of you during the coverage of your marriage would affect uh, the time in which this uh, divorce is had. The cooperation, perhaps, if you will, of a party. Um, you know, some, some parties would decide that they don't want to uh, comply, they don't want to respond in time, and when they do, then there is another excuse, there's an application before the court. These uh, type of events would delay the hearing of the divorce, exactly. Uh, is there a way the court can speed it? Because sometimes those delays may actually be intentional. It may be part of the emotional fight that Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think there's fair hearing that the court uh, grants to both parties, and it will reach that time when you know, a matter is set for hearing, and, and applications would be dispensed off with as soon as possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have Elizabeth from Nakuru. Good morning, Elizabeth. Morning, morning. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. Uh, straight to your question or comment. Okay, my question is, uh, okay, or uh, rather it's uh, something that happened to me. We were married for five years uh, and uh, went to the age to get the certificate in the name of if I don't get the certificate, it's not going to be for the hospital. This fact that when I was pregnant, 
So we had a baby and we stayed together for five years, but the relationship was not that So, like three years ago, we left each other and I'm uh, living my life with my son and he is just there. He doesn't support us or anything. So I wanted to find out if I want to continue with my life and maybe get somebody else to marry me. How am I going to do it? How am I going to get a divorce uh, document and what are the processes? And what about him? Why? He's not supporting his son, but he saved his son. I can't be any assistant on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Wageshi, this is uh, more for you, Elizabeth in Nakuru, who they went to the Attorney General and, um, um, you know, sort of uh, formalized their, their relationship. Uh, they have a child, and uh, then he's not supporting the child, but they're separate now. But she would want to get into another relationship. What's the procedure? Uh, the procedure for her would be uh, to, it sounds to me that she's contracted a civil marriage if she went to the Attorney General's and uh, for <coughs> the grounds for divorce under the civil marriage include the adultery, the cruelty, um, the new ground of irreconcilable differences. <coughs> desertion as well and depravity so she can uh, through way of petition to the court um, the p ask for a divorce ask for separation she's spoken of the issue of the child the jurisdiction of the court is such that um, matters pertaining to the children are addressed before the children's court and therefore she can also access that by way of filing a plaint into the children's court uh, attaching there you know birth certificate and records and um, you know explaining to the court that this relationship has now gone sour and that since the separation there has been no support from the father parental responsibility is something that should be there between both mother and father it's uh, children's rights are viciously protected by the children's court and uh, she can definitely get provision under under the law okay yes all right chris let's bring in children here because uh, i know that's one of uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the the areas and like the saying goes when two elephants fight it's the grass that suffers yes. yet um divorce seems to be something that's so strong uh they almost don't care for the children um one what would cause somebody to get to that level and secondly how can you uh, have uh, a divorce that does not affect the children as much they will still get affected but does not especially affect them emotionally I think let's take the second one first um, if you look at the statistics children who've gone through a bad divorce in a situation where there's a lot of fighting there's a long custody battle there's acrimony between the parents you see definite signs that the children have suffered considerably they don't reach their full potential as adults they have bad relationships themselves <coughs> they fail in school in college etc so there should be a huge incentive for parents to try and avoid that situation arising and essentially it boils down to the parents cooperating if they go on being parents, even though they live in separate houses and so on, then the effect on the children is minimized. And it's absolutely vital that people try and get into that frame of mind as quickly as possible. But as you implied, um, the process of going through a divorce is hugely traumatic for the, the couple in every possible level. I mean, there's the feeling of rejection, there's the, there might have been cruelty, etc. That there'll be hugely high feelings about why it's all happening and then when you start the process of pulling the relationship apart especially finances property etc people are hugely hurt by it all you know your whole future the whole idea you had the wealth you were beginning to develop is suddenly being split and people get enormously affected by that and to be honest they often don't behave rationally you know I mentioned the couple who sp spent all their wealth on lawyers fees you know that wasn't a rational thing to do it was it really but that's what happens people end up fighting over the dog you know who gets the dog well does it really matter you know but it does to them and you have to recognize what's going on so as far as humanly possible 
if people realize that the divorce is beginning to, the whole process is beginning to get acrimonious, they need to get some professional guidance. And somebody needs to take on the role of the mediator, trying to get them to cooperate, because that is what will cause the best outcome. It will soften the blow. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk property. Mm -hmm. Once now the divorce has gone through, and uh, of course, uh, people need to go separate ways, yes. but they cannot go separate ways without property. And uh, there's an interesting article that was in the papers this morning. Yes, I uh, saw with it. A lady who uh, came with police and uh, you know trucks to empty the their matrimonial home. Yes. Um, and uh, how? W what happens with the property, and what's the law? Okay. I'd first just like to put out there that, uh, you know, regarding reporting, uh, the, the, the identity of the children is at risk in this particular article. And uh, this is protected under our constitution. And uh, it's, 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 it's not worthy just to put that on record going forward. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> uh, the procedure that ought to have followed um, would be to uh, seek for division of matrimonial property uh, before the High Court. And that's through an originating summons, but I wouldn't uh, confuse the audience with the legal jargon. Uh, but the essence of it basically is to ask the court to help these two parties who have since separated, being the requirement, to divide this property, which is based on contribution. So there will be the defining of what that matrimonial property is, starting with the matrimonial home, where you either owned or you were leasing, um, and then the items that you've acquired during the coverture of your marriage, and you put that all before the court, and you explain what each role, you know, what, what part, what contribution you put in, mm -hmm. um, so that you can have a share in it. Do who defines? Is it the court or the, the, the couple? We have guidance in the law based on what contribution is, and uh, this can include if... Um, <coughs> If you were, for instance, managing family businesses, if you were, for instance, doing childcare, if you were uh, working also for gain and uh, putting in money towards uh, the household items, food, etc., all of this is uh, presented before the court and you leave uh, determination and the other party, your, your, your spouse or your ex-spouse at this point would put in a response and say, no, actually the, the case was this and I had what this through this means and uh, then we leave a precedent to decide. Okay. Yes. All right, we have Rose in Mombasa. Good morning, Rose. Rose in Mombasa, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very well, thank you, Rose. Your question or comment? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. My problem is I was legally married for, uh, in 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been having quarrels over this man not coming home because he lives in Nairobi and I live in Mombasa. So three years after the marriage, I actually insisted that this guy should come back home and when coming back home, he left. When I left to work, when I came back in the evening, I found this guy had gone. He had taken all his stuff, a marriage certificate, my baby's uh, immunization card, and everything, uh, all our photos, wedding photos, and till to death, he has not come back. And that's five years now down the line. Is there any ground for divorce on this time, at this time? All right. Thank you, Rose, uh, for your question. I'll take another question so that we just answer them together. Magdalene in Pangani. Good morning, Magdalene. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Your comment or question? Okay. My question I'm asking on behalf of a friend. Mm -hmm. They had married, but they, they don't have a legal marriage like certificate. Mm -hmm. The one, uh, the lady got a kid on the relation of boyfriend, girlfriend. And then sorry, the that, the sorry ju just repeat that. Sorry, that Bagdelin. Yes. Just repeat that. I'm, not, I'm saying mm -hmm. the lady and the boy, mm -hmm. they were in the relationship of boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay. One of the lady got pregnant, mm -hmm. and then the man, he, he, he cop up, he had already married another wife. Okay. Can you go in a divorce in that process? All right. Thank you, Magdalene. 
Okay, we have two questions there. Rose in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And uh, Magdi, let's start with Rose. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Rose, if I understand, uh, says that her, they were legally married and her husband uh, left, packed everything, including their marriage certificate, right. and walked out and has since not returned right. to the home. Um, I, don't, I didn't quite hear clearly if there was a child involved. Yes, there is a child because he, he went with a child's uh, um, um, medical card. Ah, yes, the medical card, yes. Um, the redress that she should have, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious to know if, first of all, she has access to her child to find out um, if she's been able to continue giving love and affection to her child. Uh, she should immediately start off with the children's court and demand for this because it's her right as a mother to be able to access her child and to be able to give love and affection. Um, the unilateral decision is unfortunate because the impact, as we've heard from Chris, on children, especially when parties are divorcing or separating, is really unfortunate. And therefore, uh, she should immediately start by uh, getting audience from the children's court to get her parental rights protected and be able to access the minor. Um, regarding the uh, marriage, she can also then also file for a divorce mm -hmm. based on the ground of desertion. It sounds to me that he left and he has since not come. So there she'd be claiming to court that uh, he has deserted the home and she's been you know, left without any means to <coughs> reconcile. She's been left without any explanation and thereby the court will be able to understand that indeed okay. the marriage on has... Grounds of desertion. Exactly, on grounds of desertion. Okay. We also have Magdalene who uh, is calling on behalf of a friend and the friend is in a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend. She got pregnant mm -hmm. um, and discovered the man either got married or married somebody else uh, during the relationship or later. Mm -hmm. um, can the the pregnant lady divorce? Um, the divorce will not arise in the event where there is no marriage and it sounds to me there was just a relationship and uh, not even cohabitation I think if I understood correctly from her from the from the short call um, therefore she would be able to perhaps get uh, support maintenance uh, mm -hmm. in regards to their child again through by addressing the the children's court and the children's court. exactly all right exactly uh, well fantastic i'm sure there's some response that has been coming through and uh, we have sophia with uh, that uh, response so sophia uh, do you have uh, some of the comments that have been coming through a <laughs> number of questions uh, that were coming through but interesting uh, just conversation there because for many people it's Chris even to know at what point to just let go when you were just talking about that when you determine it is time to go different parts but usually sometimes nasty how do you avoid those nasty situations well I mean in a perfect world as you begin to realize that things are going wrong you start talking about it mm. and you limit the damage the, the biggest problem is when somebody is behaving badly and oblivious to what's going on and the other one is getting more and more desperate until an explosion occurs and from that moment on things are so poisonous that it's very very difficult to have rational conversations about it but my my basic principle is always if you're not happy in the relationship if you don't come home with joy in your heart then start getting some help straight away because relationships are supposed to be nice and if they're not take that as the first warning sign and start mm. to involve somebody else in the in the whole problem yeah and where do other say friends family come in into helping and how right um, my basic rule is that you should not involve friends and family you should actually work together yourselves and if you need help find a professional whether that's a priest a lawyer a psychologist what have you the reason being that they keep secrets you go telling your mother-in-law about your problems she will never forget them mm. and she will tell everybody else and you know your your whole problem has gone public same with your friends so basically keep it within the nuclear family and whatever professional help you feel is appropriate yeah final for me there are people who have their divorce proceedings protracted taking a very long time uh, there are cases where one party will refuse to sign or not <coughs> doesn't want to divorce just wants to make life miserable for you and yet maybe you're in a position you want to remarry how are those kind of situations handled by the court 
Well, there are different um, elements that can frustrate this process, and we had discussed some earlier. Mm. Um, for instance, in the event that one does not want to participate, that they don't want the divorce, um, in such an instance, you know, you'd explain that service had been affected. Another challenge that could occur is that somebody uh, fails to avail themselves. You know, you have an instance where somebody is overseas and you don't, you know, you can't contact them, for example. You don't know which address to find them at. These are elements that can frustrate uh, parties um, towards pursuing that divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, but the court is able to, to set up a place. For instance, you have means of substituted service. You can apply to court and ask that you substitute. Uh, rather than having personal service effected on you, you can serve somebody through the advertisement, through newspaper, for example. So these are ways that are put in place um, so that the process is expedited. That being mm -hmm. said, um, the challenge still exists. Your know, judiciary has moved leaps and bounds, and, and we're quite happy for that, especially within the family division. However, there's still more way to go. There's still much more uh, room to grow in terms yeah. of efficiency within our judiciary. Mm -hmm. And we are working hand in hand with the judiciary to make sure that we get there. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us both. The uh, process of divorce. Uh, there you have it in our conversation this morning on our lifestyle segment. Um, it is not a happy thing, I guess, you know, when you get married and exchange those, those vows at that particular moment. It does appear to be a forever thing. And for most people, at least those who are getting into it for the right reasons, it's uh, until death do them part, but sometimes it doesn't pan out. Um, and uh, one expert once said, you know, it gets to a point that you do not have to make it work by hook or crook. If it's not working, truly not working, uh, it gets to a point that you must uh, move on. Hence the process of divorce. Um, that's it for today. It is 8.58 uh, a.m. Uh, so great conversations this morning yes great conversation and um, you know just learning a lot uh, in the press room there was quite a lot of uh, uh, to learn from there mm -hmm. on what we can do better and how we can do it better mm -hmm. and also the view that people have towards what we report yeah 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 always interesting um, discussions here on morning express on the newsroom even the tweets that somebody was saying we've become retweeters <laughs> journalists how sad that somebody out there feels that way yeah and uh, just just before we go, um, you had mentioned that tomorrow I need to come with some clothes. This, uh, do, oh, do, I, do, yeah. I, do I come as you know as usual or? Oh yeah. So we are going to have Thursdays off as fitness Thursdays. That's what we're going to call them for our lifestyle. Monday we have your inspiration. Tuesday we have your health. Wednesday we have matters relationship. We have women issues as well, even men issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday we're all about fitness. So tomorrow you definitely want to join us on our journey. The journey begins. Yes, and a journey of fitness that we need. And uh, of course, with some of the health issues we've handled, uh, one, one word that keeps recurring is lifestyle. Lifestyle. So we need to ensure that because of our change of lifestyle, we get into matatus, we drive more often, uh, we need to find some exercise, you know. Yeah, so fitness is what we'll be focusing on and we'll cover it from every possible angle there is. You don't want to miss it. We'll even have workouts right here in studio as we go along. So let's see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day and take care. Have a good day and enjoy the rest of your viewing.